In this video, I'm going to show you how I went from this to to this. Welcome to my software journal. Today we're going to be talking about software journal 2.0 behind the scenes. So today we're going to be doing a breakdown of all the upgrades to get to where software journal is today. So we're in the software journal 2.0 as we can clearly see. And I'm just going to show you the whole entire gear setup and the, the whole settings and everything of how I create these videos. So this was a request by one of my subscribers and also one of my closest friends, Travis. So shout out to Travis. Um, he the one who suggested this video. So I'm doing it today. And this is probably gonna be a part one to this because there's some other stuff that I do also in pulse. Before we start this video, I'm gonna give you a complete disclosure. And essentially, I was not paid to do any review of these products. I pay all these products with my own money and essentially all the links in the description below are paid links and what that means is that I get a small commission for if you click on that link and purchase the item from that link is because I'm with the Amazon affiliate program as an associate. Hope you guys enjoy the video so let's get into it. I'm just going to start from the beginning. So one of the things I wanted to improve on first in my videos was just the audio. The audio was okay in my like previous location where I was because the audio wasn't bouncing off the walls. But as you can clearly hear that you hear this echoing in the background and it doesn't sound crisp, it doesn't sound clear. So let's fix that first. And clap. So I did those claps for, you know, the editor. That guy, he also he needs this in order to like do the matching up and the syncing up of the audio and the video. So I did that because I'm actually not using the audio anymore on this camera anymore, but now I'm using the audio from a different recording device. As you can see, I'm using a lavalier mic and the particular lavalier mic that I'm using is a insignia something something. It's a lav mic. So essentially a lav mic is used for close approximations and just gives you a better, crispier sound without the whole entire, you know, noise in the background. I really want to invest in this because to get that crispier sound, I might, you know, go further into like shotgun mics, but with shotgun mics, you actually catch the audio that bounces off the walls. So you will more likely hear my kids screaming if I was using a shotgun mic. But for today, I think for my purposes today is a lav mic is more than enough to you know, fit the needs for my audio. All right, so let's go into the next one. All right, so the next one is lighting. Lighting is so important. Um, audio is like really good because I mean, even though you might not have a really good picture, audio is gonna give you like, all right, I can listen to this guy in the background because he's saying some good stuff. But the next part of that is lighting. It's lighting up your subject. I'm currently using this lamp and I don't really know the t like color temperature of it. So while I'm looking into the camera and doing the white balancing and all this other stuff, it's probably not showing that good. And I'm gonna go into the camera settings next, but yeah, as you can see, this line is not doing it. Let's switch it up. So now we got the lighting. It's looking way a little bit more better. Um, the only thing about it, I mean, you can see I mean, this lighting is not too harsh like the other one is and super hard, but it, it's still hard and it's, you know, very, making it really bright and it's showing a little light spots on my face. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to show you how to fix that. This lighting right here, I got this actually from Amazon. It actually came with like this um, whole entire kit. It's actually two of them. And it is really helpful for, you know, lighting up your subject, lighting up your objects. Lighting is so important. I'm using this lighting right now. I don't have the soft box filter on it. So I'm going to put a little soft filter on it just to, you know, even out the light because it's super harsh right now. All right. So that should be a little bit more softer. Now you don't see like super harsh lines in the background and super, a lot of shadows. So hard shadows. It pretty much evens out the light on your whole entire face. It actually gets rid of like a lot of blemishes. If you have blemishes or somewhat, it, it softens up and smooths and smoothing out those blemishes. I actually got a little cut right here from my 
my little puppy. Actually, she ain't, she's not a puppy. She's like six years old. Yeah, she she did a little scratch. We we're, you know, wrestling and tussling. Put them hands on you. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm going to show you some camera settings that I set up for this particular camera. So I'm currently actually using the GoPro 4. And it's, it's a super old camera, but me, I essentially used whatever I could for the setup. And also, it came with like a little clamp thing, but I broke it. You're going to see that. I was struggling, man. I was struggling with it. I was like, I'm not buying any more camera gear if I don't have to, okay? I'm done with it. I'm just going to use what I can do. Stop making excuses and start, you know, recording. Just, you know, uh, just press record. You just got to press record sometimes. Make this content out here. You know, make stuff that's enjoyable and educational and also entertaining to you guys because I like to watch YouTube and I like when things are very informative and also very entertaining at the same time. So let's show you that. Let's do it. All right, as you can see, this is my settings. I got the resolutions for 1080. I got the frames per second at 30. And when I was doing this, you guys, like I was really trying to learn as much as uh, what can I do with the current stuff that I had. Like I have my phone here and it actually shows way better picture. But I just really wanted to see how much quality I can get out with this camera. And I also didn't have a mount for my phone. So didn't really want to buy another mount because I'm a minimalist. All right, so as you can see, I, I got these, um, the linear setting on there, the frames per second at 30, and that's gonna be really important. Remember that number. And we also have the spot meter, and I set the Pro Tune. So this is where you can, you know, if you know what you're doing, you're doing what you need to do, you can set these Pro Tunes on. This allows, opens up a whole bunch of settings. So white balance, so I know the temperature of the, the current uh, softbox lighting which is like this 5500 K I set that to that so that's why when you look at the video it looks more you know it, it gives you the color of my possibly close to my complexion and uh, Google Pro color don't really know what that setting does let's skip it all right shutter so this shutter thing so the best way I can explain it shutter should be as twice as much as your frames per second so so there's one uh, to the 60th shutter speed. So that's what you should set it at. So like if you have like your frames per second at 24, uh, you can get it pretty close to like, you know, uh, one to the 48th per second. So, or one to the 50th per second. This will allow like more of a cinematic type look. And yeah, um, that's that. And I put an ISO mode lock on there. And that's really important because it allows you to set it for as low as you can possibly set it to when you go to your ISO limit setting. And the ISO is essentially the light exposure on your subject. So how much light is actually coming into the uh, camera sensor. This, this pretty much makes your you know picture super exposed or just amount, a good amount exposed or underexposed or super dark. You definitely want to set your ISO pretty decent so you can get a decent picture out of your videos. Yeah, so that's going to be really important for when we go to the, the next part of this video. But yeah, essentially that's the ISO. I set it to 400. I keep it between 200 to 400. And sharpness, medium, because I didn't want it too sharp, you know what I'm saying? Show you my imperfections. So I'm beautiful regardless. All right, and that's essentially it. All right, so we're coming on the last bit of this video. There's two more things I wanna show you. I'm gonna show you the stand, which is the tripod, and I'm also gonna show you the camera that you know completes this, this whole entire look that I was looking for for my channel. You know, it's, it's a start for me because I wanna do more with my channel. I just wanna show you this. It's my attempt of some B-roll. So let's get into that. So to put everything together, I'm just gonna show you how this all looks put together. So let's get into it. All right, as you can see, this is the final look and pretty much this is the whole entire setup. I'm gonna show you the settings now of this camera. Let's get into that. Right now we're in the manual settings. We're gonna to go to the recording, gonna to go to choose and we're gonna to set to manual. 
So this is gonna give you a lot of freedom and set up like your settings such as your shutter speed right now because my frames per second right now is at 30 frames per second. So let's go into that first. So we have the resolution just like in the GoPro. We have the 1080 at 30 frames per second. And we set the manual sound. So this is for my my lavalier mic. Some cameras have like gains and stuff. It'll set it super high so you can hear stuff in the background. So right now I'm setting my gain manually. So because before it was at audio. And when you have it at audio, like it increases the gain. So it's like searching for the sound. You never really wanted to search for the sound. So yeah, I have mine set on my camera. So from this first notch right here, I do one, two, three, four, five, six. So six notches over to the right from that first notch. All right, so we have that and all these right here are just disabled. It's not doing anything. I'm going back to to the main screen. So aperture, so you see like there's like a blurry background in my videos nowadays with software journal. So this aperture allows for that. I set mine super low so I can have like a depth of field to my shot. It gives you that like depth of field. There's a blurry background and sharpness to the subject in the middle. Thing too, you see this little zone thing right here? So I have my set on the autofocus zone. So you'll see this setting right here. So the autofocus method. So you have the tracking one, you have the auto zone one, and you have the point one. So I chose this one because I knew I was going to be staying in this uh, central area when I'm taking my videos. I just chose this one and I really didn't like this one because when you're tracking around, it's going to be searching for your face and it can take you in and out of focus based off uh, how close you come in or how far you move back. I didn't really like that. I didn't want no blurriness. So I just kept it on the auto zone. All right, going back to the settings. All right, let's go back to the main screen because I like it. Like you can easily go to it. So the ISO, like I said with my other camera, I, I was generally sticking between like 200 to 400 for the ISO. So in this case, like I actually like, you know, 320 nowadays. So I'm sticking to 320 for my ISO for my, my, my settings down for the camera. The reason why you wanna stay within like that range, especially with this type of lighting that I have, when you go higher in your ISO, you, it becomes super exposed and becomes super grainy. I want a sharp, clear picture so you can see. So the next thing is like the white balancing. So the temperature of the light, even though like I know the settings for like this one, the for the temperature for that light right here is, which is like 5,500K, I still wanted to, you know, you do something and custom so like the soft box actually lightens up the temperature of the lighting so I went with a custom white balancing so white balancing is where you you know get the temperature of your light so you can get like a better sense of how your complexion I heard a lot of stuff about Canon and Canon's like color system and stuff like that and when you set up your white balancing it helps with like getting that really good coloring where it's not super faded. I'm gonna show you how I did that really quick. All right, so I went to manual, did that. So I held it up. All right, so we went with that. So now this is how you're gonna be setting up. You go to your menu, go to custom white balance. And that picture that we just took, we're gonna set that for our custom white balance. It's like, okay, and now your white balance is set. Anytime when you are dealing with like a different key light, such as the sun, the key light is just your main light. And you just wanna make sure that you get the temperature of that lighting so that it can show the, the color properly. That's essentially what white balancing is. I think that's pretty much it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you got some value from that video, Make sure you do a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, peace.